they knew I was from Wingate. You know what I'm saying? So I, I'm rocking in there for for like a week. Then they step to me. Yo, what's up? What's up? They're like, yo, you, where you from? from Brownsville. I worried. That's what, that's what we thought. And I was like, oh, that was a sign. So uh, I played and, the song. And they were straight, what they were straight flat bush singing shit. Straight flat bush. Was straight about it. It was on. It was on me, son. Again, I was, I was, I was, I was stunting. I was, I was getting shorties. Uh, I was coming through. I had a shorty in there. She was digging me. She was old and shit. And she the one put me on. She the one. She was like, yo. Um, she was like, yo, you gotta watch yourself. I was like, huh? I remember like telling her, like, what you mean? She was like, yo, it's, it's eyes on you. And she was an older chick. Her, my my bad. Her name was Doris. That was that's where I met her. At. She was, she was from Flatbush, and um, she was like, yo, she was like, um, yo, they on you, yo. She's like, for real, like, between me and you, they got they they planning on it. She went there during the day, and she went there at night, too, to graduate, you know what I'm saying? This credits or whatever. And um, Doris put me on, she was like, yo, they on you, chat. And I was like, word. So that that, that was uh, that was my rap, that was the end of my rap these days, too. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, growing up, with my parents, like my parents, my mom was doing something called the program. It was used to be one on Hawkinson, and it used to be one on uh, on Powell Street over there in Brownsville. So when you grow up, when you grow up, it's called the program, ARTC. When you grow up on the program, which you like, you go everywhere and you and you know everybody, kind of low key, like you know everybody, you in every project, you know what I'm saying? You, I'm in everywhere. So I always had this thing, man. I grew up with this thing, like yo, you gotta have juice. You know what I'm saying? You ain't got no juice. You gonna get, you know what I'm saying? You gonna get it, cause you, you, there's too many places. Like my grandmother lived in Plaza, Noble Drew. Uh, I lived in the Towers, then we moved to Garvey, then we moved back to the Towers. And then uh, my, my cousins lived in, lived in lived in Van Dyke. Uh, my cousins lived in uh, Riverdale. Uh, shit, I had family in Brownsville and Langston Hughes. So for me, I, I went everywhere. I was a kid, I'm, I'm 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. But I'm going to every project, so I felt like, yo, I know somebody everywhere. And that same mentality, I do that about Brooklyn. I do that, I'm like, yo, if you can live in Brownsville and go to every project, and everybody know you or, or know some, somehow you can live, I know I could go any other neighborhood. So when I went to Flatbush, and I went to uh, East Flatbush, and I went to, you know, any neighborhood I went to, I always felt like I could be all right, because I was, I was from the Ville. That, 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 uh, that mentality was good, but at the same time, you know, I'm blessed, man. I could have got murked, so I did a lot of crazy shit. Uh, and I told you, I was one time, I was in East New York, my family from Pink Houses, and uh, my cousin Shanique, and uh, she, from, she, from, she from Pink Houses, and I was one time, I was over there, got caught slipping. I was in a store called Milk Jug. It's got a store, and I don't know if it's still there. It's called Milk Jug. And uh, I was in milk jug, man. It was dead empty. Nobody was in there. I mean, yeah, during the daytime, I walk in. I'm thinking, you know, everything good. I got that lotion on again. And um, some dudes came in, my boy. They came in deep. And um, I had already heard many stories. Because, uh, you know, when you're young, you, 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 you want to know everything. You want to know everything. I mean, being from, being from Brooklyn, yo, who's this, who's that? You're hearing all this. The, the, the stories of this person, legend, that legend. So it was the legendary 18. You know what I'm saying? And um, I was like, you know what I'm saying? I, you know, I'm in the store chilling, whatever I'm doing, going to get signed, making it quick. And I, they came in on me, my boy. And it was like, yo, who the fuck is this? And I was like, because I had all this shit. I'm tall, light skinned. I got a flat top. I kid and play. And I had a, I had a big polo, uh, like a, like a, like a, like a, like a air warmer, it's like a, you wear it over your head, like, you know what I'm saying? But my hair was sticking out and shit. It's like a headband. But it was, it was, a, it was colorful. It had the big badge on it. Oh, yeah, I know and, what you're um, talking about. I know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. It's like the it's thick, crazy. it's like the thick ass, um, it's like a thick ass headband. Yeah, thick, thick shit. So, we been, so now, my hair sticking out, you know what I'm saying? I'm going around pink houses because I had a couple of shorties that like me. You know what I'm saying? I'm going around here. Showing my face and they, yeah, he was, I'm something new. I'm somebody new. And I'm sure I'm, a, I'm, I'm Sydney cousin. I'm sure I'm cousin. So it's like, okay. So I go through there and um, I forget, man. This dude walk in and they say, yo, Pig. And I, I knew the name. And they was like, yo, what the fuck? He ain't Pig. So, yo, what the fuck is this? 
man, you know, it was a wrap. I think they got me. You know, like they got me, son. I ain't know what to do. And I had that, I had that all your box of cutter in my pocket, son. And I never forget. I put my hands in my pocket and I, I, I you know, I took the safety off and I clicked it one time, like, damn, if I cut but, but always said to myself, I said to myself, I, if I cut this dude, my boy, man, I'm finished. You know what I'm saying? I'm thinking to myself, if I cut this dude, I'm finished. So uh at this, at that time, my boy, I don't know how it happened last, but Blessings, man. God saved me, champ. My cousin walked in. I don't even know how. I think she went to Franklin Lane. Franklin Lane. I think she went to Franklin Lane or something. But how many niggas? How many niggas? You. This is when you was in the store. Still, you said. I was in the store. How many niggas was it? And, and what type of what? Like you had mad polo shit on. Mad polo. I had the vest on with the with the with the ski man on the back. I had the shirt. I had the. Uh, I had the. You know, it was a short. It was it was a vest. So I had the, the, the shirt on, I had a fucking of badge of crest on the, on the arm, I had the thing on my head, I had my ski pants on, I was rocking it, you know what I'm saying? I had on some Reeboks, I think, or some shit. And um, and it was crazy, you know, now that I think about it, it was outside. It was outside. It wasn't outside when I pulled up, when I walked in, but when I, they just came formed outside. So I'm in the store procrastinating. <laughs> I'm in the store procrastinating, like, yo. So walk out, mind my business, don't say nothing. They ain't gonna say nothing, just keep it moving. Before that, they walk in. The son said, yo, who the fuck is this? And I'm just like, that, I'm, I'm trying to open, like, ignore him. And then all of a sudden, my boy was getting heated. And my cousin came out of nowhere, bro. Yo, bro, I don't know how to tell you how I got like that. I had so many calls, so close so calls, calls last, I ain't gonna front. My life is crazy. You said it was Pig that said, yo, who the fuck is this? It was Pig, my boy, it was him himself. It was him himself. I, I cause you know what I'm saying, I was already glued to the streets as far as who's who. He knew my cousin, so she was pretty, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, everybody liked her, she was her name Shanique. Everybody liked her. So, um, I had my cousin Gloria. She was from there, she was saying, cousin Gloria, Felicia. Uh, you know what I'm saying, we all, you know, they from there, so. They, they had me, you know what I'm saying? They had, they had enough. And it was pretty, they, everybody liked it, so everybody knew him. So, yo, yo, my cousin came out of nowhere. Yo, what's up? I'm like, she loud as shit. I'm like, I'm like, yo, what's up? He like, yo, Sean, who the fuck is this? She like, that's my cousin, baby, leave my cousin alone. She was like, he was like, yo, Sean, this nigga don't be coming around here with this fuck, yo. He like, he screamed, he parked on me. I was, you got a chance? I was like, yo, you got a chance? So I was like, you know what I mean? I took it on the chin. Walked it off, so I was like, yo, um, now I'm thinking, damn, I went to the crib, and uh, as usual, I used to be like, damn, why did I come over here so late? She gotta go home, you feel me? Because <laughs> um, at the time, it was, you know, dead on, dead it was like the stories of dead on was out there, you know what I mean? So it's like, yo, my cousin, I never forget, she used to tell me when I'm leaving, I used to sometimes leave two in the morning, three in the morning, summertime. She be like, don't let that, don't let that on get you. I be like, oh shit, yeah, and that was the most scariest shit. I used to take up staircase. I got to still remember how them staircase smelling pink houses, man. And I used to get out of there, man. I used to walk you through the projects, headed to the. Uh, I, at the time, I was living on Milford Street, man. I was living next door to this crack house. Dead ass. This crack house was so busy, son. The cop, I think, I think the cop, the police owned the crack house. Cause I never seen no shit like this. The lines was so crazy, lads, for this crack house, my boy. You know, I never seen no shit like this. And then the cops would pull up, they clear for like two minutes, or they wouldn't even clear. The cops would go in, come out, and uh, the lines still be rocking. You know what I'm saying? I never seen no, and it was right across the street from where I was living. So I was just watching this shit. Like, I'm some of them little streets, Milford Street. This little street, and I'm looking at this shit all day and night, like, wow, this is wow, crazy. And um, I remember living there and saying to myself, yo, this shit is crazy, man. So I was fortunate last when my man in high school said, yo, go to this boxing gym with me, you feel me? Because um, that was life changing, man. My life was ruined, man. My pops was in jail. Actually, yeah, was he in jail at the time? He might have got caught. Yeah, yeah. My pops was on the run for a while. He was on America's Most Wanted. And then uh, my mom's was doing bad. 
it was just me. So I was just out there in the streets, and uh, and it wasn't for you know what I'm saying this dude named Zach. Zach, he the one told me to go to the gym with him. Yeah, uh, that was life changing. My boy, I was living all over Brooklyn. I was homeless. I was uh, I got arrested a few times. Uh, that was my biggest my biggest fear was going to the island. You know, that's why I'm a big fan of what you know, what you're doing and everything. I appreciate you. You're a great storyteller as well. And um, I be listening because I that was that was the whole thing that I was fighting. Man, I was fighting uh, not to get locked up. But it seemed like at the time I was I was trying to get locked up because that's where all the people, that's where all my my homies was at. That's how everybody was like, yo. It was kind of like a rites of passage. You know what I mean? It's like, yo, oh, you ain't been locked up. You know, so you saw you ain't been, you ain't been. You know, you ain't been locked up with whoops. I was just like, damn, I just got me ahead and do get locked up. And uh, a few times I got arrested. I was like, well, I'm going to the island. And it was like, nah, you get out on bail or whatever. So it was even the art, 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 some shit. And um, I was fortunate, man, because I remember, I remember going to see my pops guys on the island uh, when he had finally got caught. And um, and he was, he was sitting in my pops, my step pops, he raised me. And he was like, yo, uh, he was crying on the bench and he was crying, his kids in his eyes. And my, and my mom was telling him, you know, I was bowing out. And I was, you know, listening. And I was just on some missions and shit, trying to, well, I was rebelling. I was hard. I was hurt. You know what I'm saying? I lost my crib in the towers. He had got evicted. Um, you know what I'm saying? My life had went from, you know, private school. And then here I am. I'm, I'm sleeping on the train. I'm sleeping. I'm sleeping in an abandoned building. I'm sleeping anywhere I could. You know what I mean? This wasn't a kid. This wasn't from a kid who grew up having Christmas toys and every birthday I had a party. You know what I'm saying? So it was like, I went from, I don't know, I just came home from school one day last and we got evicted. It wasn't like no, no, you know, nothing prepared me for what was to come. You know what I mean? I wasn't planning on being a boxer. You know what I'm saying? I'm the only child, no brothers and sisters. Now I was bullied. You know what I'm saying? They used to beat me up. You know what I'm saying? But uh, I, I could fight. I, I fight back. I fight back. You know what I'm saying? Uh, sometimes they made me fight back. You know, the older dudes in the building, they made me fight back. And it was like, yo, they knew my mom. Everybody loved my mom. My mom was just like a neighborhood celebrity. You know what I'm saying? Everybody loved Margie. And you know what I'm saying? Miss Margie. Everybody called her Miss Margie. Miss Margie. So it was crazy because sometimes I come, and I, I come home and I got the enemy, you know, in my, in, in, in my crib. I'd be like, yo, mom, what you, what are you doing here? Be like two or three boys. From another street, like from Herkimer or some shit, or from. I'd be like, "Bah, what you think?" Be like, "Bah, he helped me, he he me carry the bags, or, or I know his mother. He a good boy." And I'd be like, "Oh man," and they'd be sitting there smiling because they just was happy to come into the crib. You know what I'm saying? They, they was happy to come into the towers, and then they in my house. They looking around like, "Oh, this how y'all living?" So um, that was that was like something. My mom's always happy, you know. Friends with other friends and shit. I'm like, wow, nah, them boys don't like us. This, that, and third. So um, that went from living good last to living like a scoundrel, like living everywhere, stealing money. I mean, stealing um, fruit from the from the fruit from the uh, fruit stand. It was days I ain't eat. I used to go buy a fruit stand on Belmont or anywhere, to take some apples or some oranges or anything. So that was like, you know, that was a little bit of fool. So then when I got into the boxing. That kind of changed up everything because now when I had no place to sleep, I sleep in the gym sometimes, and and then uh, dudes would be like, "Yo, I spar you, you give me five dollars. I use the five dollars to give me four chicken wings and French fries, and you know, or buy. If I was, you know, we would buy. If I was lucky, I had five or six. I get the I get the pork fried rice with it instead of the fries. You know what I mean? <laughs> so uh, I used to. That was a lifestyle for me for a minute, and then uh, unfortunately. Um, after one of my run-ins with the law, uh, one of my last run-ins with the law as a kid, I, uh, I, uh, I went to the gym and it was like, yo, you shouldn't be facing five years. And my pops, I was going back to my pops, what happened to see my pops in jail. And you know, he was a tough man, he was a big tough dude. And he was, he, was, he had cried, he cried, he tears in eyes, he said, Shannon, the same for you, you know what I'm saying? And he was in the day of visiting room, he was like, the same for you, I was looking around, I was doing everything. I was watching everything, looking at everything to see. I was asking, I kept asking stupid questions. Yo, did you see my friend so and so? You see, he's sitting here trying to tell me, yo, take care of your mother and do the do the right thing and go to school. And I'm just, I'm just like, yo, what about this? Yo, what about that? Yo, 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 y
started crying, bro. He was like, yo, uh, you got it wrong, Shane. This ain't for you, man. And I felt like him saying that to me was a diss. I felt like he was like saying, I, you know, I'm gonna hold it down. Like, you know, like, like, like I wasn't tough enough. Mm -hmm. That angered me. You know, it angered me. It bothered me. I was like, what you think? You know, I'm light skinned. I can't fight. I ain't gonna be here. He was like, it ain't about that, Shannon. He was like, yo, this kid's in here 16, 17, they never going home. You know what I'm saying? He said, they never going, they said, they, they play tough when they get in here, Shannon. It ain't that, it ain't like you think it is. And I'm thinking the whole time I'm being defiant. And um, that was the last time I seen him. He wound up dying in Marcy. You know, he had wound up dying in Marcy. And, uh, but, you know, a lot of people who knew him, they spoke highly of him. You know what I'm saying? You know, I, I started boxing. And you know, I was boxing. I was I was I think I was getting into boxing, but then I got you know I got good. I made it on the USA team, and he was like he was proud of me. He was telling me, that's my son. Uh, and he watching TV in jail, and he like that's my son. Uh, and uh, you know, it, it, it was an uh, experience for me to to go there and see him, and and I never forget you know to see him cry. He was such a tough dude. To see him cry was. Um, was something for me that that made me kind of like realize that yo maybe I'm maybe I'm on some stupid shit. But again, everybody was going to jail like it was like rice and passage. Like if you ain't go to jail, you wasn't cool, you wasn't down. You know what I'm saying? So I know people was catching charges just to catch a charge, just to be like yo go to jail. I seen so and so, I seen so and so. But it wasn't nobody I know came back and was telling the real truth. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't really telling the truth. It wasn't telling, they were telling stories, oh yeah, I've seen so and so, but it wasn't telling you that they was washing drawers or it wasn't telling you if they got gutted, you know what I mean? So, you know, it was what it was. So I was fortunate, man. I got into the box and shit and um, I made a life for myself, man. I was, I got my mom's, you know, like to rehab and I got some money and shit. And then, um, unfortunately, she relapsed on my birthday, she died. And, uh, you know what I'm saying? My pops wanted to die in prison. But uh, I say all I have to say, last, you know, that made me. It made me uh, who I am because uh, a lot of people don't realize that, you know, it, 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 don't, it ain't just street talk that make you somebody. You know what I'm saying? You gotta be, you gotta be tough not to do crime. You know what I'm saying? Like, they don't understand that. A lot of boys don't understand yeah, that. They, they don't know. That's the real... That's that that the crime shit is easy, bro. It's easy to it's easy to it's easy to not give a fuck. But when you gotta when you gotta stand tall and and try to do things the right way, that shit is difficult. You feel what I'm saying? Difficult. That's difficult, the difficult yeah. shit. And that and that penitentiary shit, bro. That shit is a hustle. That's just making billions of dollars off of the pain and the suffering of people from the ghetto. You feel what I'm saying? So. That jail uh, shit gets it gets glorified in some lights, but in the reality, that shit is a hustle and a new a new age form of slavery. That if a dude was lucky enough to to escape that grasp, that's a blessing, my bro. Because so one in three black men is gonna go to prison, and and that's disgusting, bro. That's disgusting. You feel me? And the, and, and and the life that you had. The life that the shit that you just told me and some of the stuff, you know, I've, I've, I've heard about, but the shit that you, the picture that you just painted, bro, you got dudes that did 20 years in jail that ain't go through half of what you've been through. You feel what I'm saying? So it's like sometimes Brownsville, sometimes the streets of Brownsville and Brooklyn in general was worse than the penitentiary. You know what I mean? That's like, a fact. That's real a fact. Talk. I remember, so I can tell you, I can say it for days telling you so many war stories in Browns, but I'm lucky to be alive, but I will say this, I was I started boxing last, right? So then they, they had this program where you go, you go, you go to jail to box the inmates. You know what I'm saying? Mm. It was a dude, what was my man name? 